morning, friends. Good morning. I would like to welcome you to June and uh, welcome you to worship. Uh, as we're worshiping today, a couple of announcements I want to keep out in front of you. Certainly to grab that friendship pad. It's on the center aisle of, of your pew. Fill that out. Share with one another. I hope you'll make a plan to stick around for a time of fellowship. Uh, we're going to be recognizing uh, the graduates in, in our congregation today. Um, so make a plan to hang out for that. Our offering, our special offering for the month of June is going to go to support uh, World Relief in the Fox Valley. Certainly we've partnered with them in a number of ways and uh, most recently with uh, the Good Neighbor program and uh, their work resettling refugees. So please, please support them with uh, your offerings today. Coming up this week, uh, Thursday, we'll be resuming Beer, Booze, and the Bible at Fat Sammy's. Words that you don't always think you're going to say in your life. But uh, that's thir- it's going to be Thursdays in the summer, 6.30 to 8. Um, we're going to kick it off here in June with uh, Pride Month themes. And so topics will go all across the board throughout the summer. But... Uh, if you've tried it and want to come back, please do. If you want to try it and maybe for the first time, give it a go. Um, that's Thursdays starting at 6.30. Um, some opportunity to serve. You could join the Bucket Brigade at the Community Garden. They're going to be watering Mondays and Thursdays because rain doesn't seem to be available, I guess. So... Um, Next Sunday, following worship, there's going to be a new parent shower for Craig and Crystal Mansky. That is... <laughs> My goodness. Um, everybody's invited. It's a potluck. Um, gifts are optional. There's a sign-up sheet right outside the office there to just kind of give people a sense of how many are going to be there. So be a part of that. And then... One more thing to keep in your uh, sights is that uh, we're going to go to the Timber Rattlers game on July 8th, but you need to sign up and pay by June 18th. Wait, I might have said June 8th. We're going on July 8th. You've got to pay and sign up by June 18th. Whew. That's it. All right, choir.
please stand and join me in the call to worship. We gather to worship the God of all creation, who crafted the seas and mountains, and yet cares for each of us. We gather to worship the God of all mystery, who rejoices in our being and offers abundant life. Please be seated. Friends, we are created in God's image and we are called good, but too often our actions distort that image and we fail to reflect the goodness uh, that God created us with, the goodness that this world is filled with. So in confession, we name those ways and we ask God to help us to change our ways. Join me in prayer. Majestic God. You have called us to live in peace, but we turn to conflict and hatred. You yearn for us to work together, but we keep finding reasons to miss each other. Forgive us and show us a better way to be our people, your body, your church. Let us stand and receive God's grace. Friends in Christ, hear the good news. 
God knows who we were made to be and has been waiting to help restore us to ourselves, to each other, and to community. God's steadfast love endures forever. Thanks be to God. Well, I'd like to invite you to help me share the peace of Christ with our friends online right here. Friends online, peace be with you. Great work, everybody. Friends here among us, peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Share Christ's peace with one another. by the spirit of truth to hear the word of life you speak and to give all glory and honor and praise to your threefold name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture lesson today is the first one is from Psalms chapter 8. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Listen to the word of our Lord. O Lord, our sovereign how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set the glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you established, what are humans that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them, Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. And sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the Lord, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our sovereign how majestic is your name in all the earth. And our second scripture lesson is from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain of which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God. All of us inspired. Could I enlist some children to join me? Now, uh, maybe some of you are here for this, but a couple weeks ago, we said goodbye to a couple friends of ours, um, the Lipinski family and the Chens. And before May Lee left, she left me a whole bucket of change, or a whole bag of change here. And she said, someone needs to make a joyful noise. So could you just uh, help me out here and grab some of that and then make a joyful noise in that bucket? Oh, there's plenty. Just gonna drop it in there. Yeah. <laughs> right? Thanks, Mailey. So today we're recognizing some graduates and we're gonna ask God to bless them. So I thought it might be I thought it might be okay to kind of talk about what is a blessing. You know, because, like, if we say goodbye to somebody, we just, bye. Or if we know they're about to do something, we might say, good luck. Hope it goes well. But a blessing is, like, sending your love with a person. All right? So, as a church, that's, that's one of the ways we take care of each other is we, we, we ask God's blessing. We share, uh, you know, that we care about each other and we support each other. We pray for each other. So I did a little bit of math. How old are all of you? Nine, ten, nine, all on the doorstep of nine, yes. So if one person in this church prayed for you nine-year-olds once a month for your whole life, it would be 108 times. That's pretty good right? If two people prayed for you, it would be 216 times. Now, some of these graduates that we're uh, celebrating today, they're about 18. So, that is, if we, if somebody prayed for them once a month, that's not a lot, right? 216 times. So, if five people prayed for them, be a thousand prayers. That's a lot. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, your parents are probably praying for you. Your grandparents are probably praying for you. Some of you have somebody, you know, some of you have some prayer buddies that you still keep in touch with. But as, as a church, we pray for each other and we care for each other. And that, that adds up over a lifetime. Lawrence students, I'm sorry it was only four years, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll keep praying for you nonetheless. All right? So just sometimes when you think, like, boy, the world is just crazy, don't forget you've got a whole circle of people who love you, care about you, and are praying for you. All right? Let's pray. Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. Thank you for community. Thank you for community. Church family. Church family. And people who care. And people who care. Help us. Help us. To care for others. To care for others. And, sh- and share your love. And share your love. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, friends. <coughs>
Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who will decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some, you'll, you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there in the wide open air. Out there, things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsie as you. And then things start to happen. Don't worry. Don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. Oh, the places you'll go. Of course, these are Dr. Seuss's words. I don't think in the last uh, couple of decades that it's possible to have graduated and not receive at least one copy of this book. <laughs> I don't know if it helped anyone, for the record. So I guess we'll have to decide if Jesus' commencement words are of help either, okay? Jesus' commencement address goes like this, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you to the end of the age. Whether you were a person sitting in a cap and gown, disciples gathered on a nameless mountain, something that they have in common, I think, is they believed and some doubted. Right? That moment of one chapter closing and a new one beginning, the mixed feelings of possibility and the dread of what could possibly happen next. In all honesty, I'd be more concerned if there wasn't a little doubt, a little trepidation stepping into the future. I'd be very concerned if there wasn't doubt in these first disciples. You know, too often we can treat faith as though it is certain, and it is certainly not. A couple of uh, quotes that I want to keep out in front of us. Doubts are the ants and the pants of faith. They keep it awake and moving. That seems helpful. Have a little doubt to keep us honest. Anne Lamott says, the opposite of faith is not doubt, but certainty. Certainty is missing the point entirely. Faith includes noticing the mess, the emptiness and discomfort, and letting it be there until some light returns. When we ignore the doubts of others or pretend that we don't have our own, you know, having faith becomes less about being in a trusting relationship with God and God's people and more like some kind of secret knowledge that um, some people seem to have and others do not. You know, when faith gets portrayed in this kind of way, it makes some people who are deeply faithful people feel like they aren't following Jesus correctly. And it can make those who want to be disciples feel like they'll never be adequate and it's not worth trying anyway. I think one of the greatest gifts that the scripture writers give us is that they didn't portray our ancestors in faith as perfect. You don't have to be a Christian for very long to realize you aren't going to perfectly believe or perfectly follow Jesus, and most certainly the company you keep isn't going to be perfect either. So, in passages like this, 
and a great many others, we are reminded that we're in good company. The disciples are sent to make disciples. What they're not sent to do is, you know, hurl gospel leaflets into the wind or hold some kind of stadium rally or Super Bowl commercials. It's not about adding members to a list. They are called in this story. We are called in this story to the harder, the less glamorous, more patient task of making disciples, building Christian community, walking with one another, learning with one another, sharing our lives, waiting when waiting is needed, offering blessing when the journey of faith goes in a new direction, and celebrating milestone moments along the way. Disciples are students. That's what that word means. Disciples are students. And now, don't get me wrong, there are people new in the faith who are, uh, you know, they're in the elementary school of discipleship. And there are the young in faith who are already getting their PhDs. But being a discipleship, being a disciple, is about becoming good students of what God wants for us. And we do it through worship, through study, through service, through being in community with each other. So it's important to remember that Jesus sent them out and sends us out to make disciples, to make students. Students who can, yes, be teachers, but students who are always learners. In baptism, we begin this journey. In baptism, we're brought into the family of faith, the school of faith. And it's in community where we, where we learn how to follow Christ. And to become Christian is not to be, you know, it's not just a laundry list of beliefs, some ideology. It's to be in relationship with God and to be in relationship with all those loved by God. So to be baptized is to know that we are children of God learning to recognize Christ and the hungry and the thirsty and the sick and the marginalized and the least of these and the doubtful. To see Christ even in the doubtful. So the good news that we have, the good news that we live, that we are called to share, we share through our faith, yes, but we share it too through our doubts, where our humanity and our vulnerability lets one another see that we are all in good company. We share this news, we can share this news, not because we are so qualified, but because Jesus makes this promise I am with you always to the end of the age. So whether we go out with fear and joy or faith and doubt, devotion or dread to do the work of Christ, it's not that we are promised success at every turn, that we will be gladly welcomed in every heart or uh, even free from persecution or suffering, but what we are promised is that God in Christ will not abandon us, but is present in the midst of our trying to be faithful, our seeking to love, our encouraging, our guiding, our giving hope, our discipleship.
This, this makes me wonder if perhaps Jesus is less a Dr. Seuss and more a Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin tells Winnie the Pooh, if there is ever tomorrow, if there is tomorrow, if ever there is tomorrow, thank you for your patience, if ever there is tomorrow when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. But the most important thing even if we're apart, I'll always be with you. That, friends, is the kind of promise that makes faith and discipleship possible. Christ is always with us. Let there be no doubt about it. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So, for various reasons, some of our graduates are not with us. I'm going to invite our Lawrence students to join us too, though. Uh, I think some folks are with us online, but um, in the narthex you will find uh, letters to each of these graduates where you can send them with your blessing, and we'll pass that along. Um, some of you may know that we have three scholarships that um, our church gives away, and uh, two recipients uh, this year are uh, Aoife Marinin and Sydney Schaefer. And so um, this is from the scholarship team. They wanted to pass along their, some good words. So... Uh, they write, Aoife shared with us that she always believes in helping others and making the world a better place. She works hard to be empathetic and inclusive of everyone. She has shown this through volunteering at Feeding America, uh, Pillars Warming Shelters, Salvation Army, Camp One Step, Families of Children with Cancer, and the Evergreen Theater. Uh, a particular member of Memorial wrote this about Aoife. Aoife is a bright and creative young woman I am confident that her work ethic, intelligence, and kindness will bring her much success in college. Uh, Aoife will be attending St. Norbert's in the fall and is currently undecided on her major. 
Uh, the other recipient is Sydney Schaefer, and the scholarship team writes, Sydney views herself as determined, creative, and resilient. She hopes to use these attributes to help her pursue a degree and a career in art therapy at Mount, S Mount St. Mary's University. She was driven to this decision as a result of the direct impact of mental health in her life, as well as her immense passion for art. Um, although Sydney and her family have moved uh, to Milwaukee, she describes MPC as the church that will forever be uh, her church family. She, partic she is particularly proud of MPC's recent More Light designation. And of Sydney, a member wrote, Sydney is very friendly and talk is a very friendly, talkative young lady. To her, everything is important, and I always knew that she was going to become an outstanding human being. So, on behalf of the scholarship team, to Aoife and Sydney, uh, we wish to congratulate these two and wish them very well on their next steps. You friends, you're all in here, right? So you're on your way. But we send you with a blessing. You've been a blessing to us and the ways that you participated in choir and the life of this congregation. And um, so we send you off with this blessing. I'm going to open in prayer, friends, and I'm going to invite you to join me in the blessing afterwards, okay? Let us pray. Loving God, it is an honor and joy to join you in affirming and celebrating the creative and scholarly accomplishments of those who are graduating and moving on to the next chapter of their lives. Thank you for the season that you have entrusted them to our care whether in their time at Lawrence or in their years growing up in this church. God, we pray that our graduates' campuses and dormitories, as well as their future homes, neighborhoods, and places of work, play, and worship would be better, more, more life-giving places because they are there. Where they see hurt, give them healing hands and healing words. Where they sense confusion, give them wisdom. Where they perceive beauty, give them a sense of thankfulness and wonder where they encounter scarcity. Give them a heart and a passion to contribute and serve. For all of today's graduates and their families, more than anything, may they find their worth not in money or fame, but in trusting in your mercies which are new every morning. Wherever the next chapter takes them, give them character that exceeds their gifts and humility that exceeds their influence. And may they bring you honor and glory in all they do. So friends, join me in the blessing. May God's blessing rest on each of you. May God's light shine on you and make your path clear. May hope carry you through the challenging times. And gratitude be your response when life is good. May your days be filled with curiosity and adventure. And may you discover the incomparable joy of living lives that bring honor and glory to God. Amen. God's richest blessing, friends. Thank you for coming up. I want to invite uh, the ushers to come at this time as we make our offerings uh, to support the mission and ministry of this church, as well as to support World Relief Fox Valley through our special giving today. So, please.
pray again. Family and faith, this is God's table, and you are welcome here. Regardless of your history, your depth of faith, even your lack of faith, come with your doubts, regardless of your sexual orientation, your gender identification, your political affiliation, your age, you are welcome here because Christ (coughs) welcomes you. This is God's table, and at this table, we proclaim God's kingdom at hand. This table, we are united, hopeful. At this table, we come hungry and leave fed. At this table, there is space for everyone for the young that see visions and the old that dream dreams. And at this table, if you listen closely, you might still hear that Pentecost rush of wind. So come, friends, come to this table where you are and always will be welcome. Um, When the time comes, I'm going to invite you to come up to center uh, to receive a piece of bread and a cup of juice and to go back around to your seat, and once you've landed, you take and eat. Um, If you'd like gluten-free bread, please uh, let me know as you come forward. Um, Join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, you have been called by many names. El Shaddai, Adonai, Elohim. We have called you creator, mother, and father, our source of love. We need more than one name for you, God, because you are bigger than our imagination. You are God of all creation, of all time and space, and yet somehow you are here with us. Just as you were there with the church when it began on Pentecost, as it continues in every age and generation. As we gather in this place, we trust, God, that you give us strength to remember our ancestors who have gone by, to remember that you have saved them and that you continue to save us. We trust, God, that though the world can be a dark place, we sometimes want to ask for a second helping of your spirit to face whatever comes in this world. Often we would like to ask you to break through the walls and give us a sign that you are here with signs that are tangible like tongues of fire and the wind rushing through. And yet, God, in this place, in this space, as we look for hope, We find it here, trusting, God, that you protect us along the way, that you go out with us uh, when we need to find your light. We trust, God, that you meet us here, and that as we come to the table with weak hands and doubting hearts, that we would indeed find light and love and blessing through this bread in this cup. So pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts so that we may remember the way in which Jesus lived, modeling for us how we should live. Bless our hearts so that as we partake in this meal, we may feel your Spirit drawing us together as one unified body. You are here with us just as like you We're there on that day when you promised to be with us always to the end of the age. And so we give you thanks, God. Remembering, as we do at this holy table, that on the night before his arrest, Jesus took, whoa, Jesus took bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant 
sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God, friends, and they are made ready for the people of God. Come, for all is ready.
and ask God's blessing. Holy Spirit, you have filled us with your light. Christ, our Savior, you have embraced us in your love. God, our Mother, you have fed us with your grace. Now send us out into your beloved world to share your light, your love, your grace with all. Blessing, honor, and glory to you. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Friends, we have received the sacrament. We go out filled, fed, and nourished, trusting that as Christ promised, he goes with us. So as we go today, friends, receive this blessing. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people, honor all creation. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of the Spirit be with us all. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.